Hey, hi friends, this is Bakappa. In this SpecFlow tutorial series, I will discuss how to perform data driven testing using data tables in SpecFlow BDD automation framework. In the previous tutorial, I have discussed how to perform data driven testing using examples. In that case, the whole scenario was running with the multiple sets of test data, right? So, so there will be sometimes you need to run specific step in a scenario with the multiple sets of test data. So that can be achieved by using the data tables in SpecFlow. So let's implement data driven testing using data tables in SpecFlow. So I'll quickly create the one feature file here in the features folder. I'll go to the new item. Then I will select the SpecFlow. Then I'll add the whole feature file here. I will provide the feature file name as data table data driven testing. So that's it. I'll click on add. So we have the feature file now. So I will go to the examples data driven testing feature file. Simply I will copy the whole scenario and I'll paste it inside the data table data driven testing. So I will rename this feature name as data table data driven testing. So similarly I will rename the scenario name with data table data driven testing. So I will remove this scenario outline and examples keyword. So that's it. Then, then I'll remove that space. Okay. So we have the three steps, and uh, we were performing the data driven testing by using the examples keyword. That whole scenario was executing based on the number of sets of test data, right? So now we will discuss how to perform data driven testing with a single step based on number of number of sets of test data. How we can execute this particular step right so what i will do so i will not touch to i will not update anything in this first two steps so i will go ahead and add one third step i will say here enter keywords in youtube i'll say enter search keywords in youtube so that's it Switch. So as of now, here I have added only one key. So like this, you can add a number of keys here and respective value, you can pass it like this. So right now we have the two sets of test data. First one is spec flow by tester stock and the second set of test data is selenium by tester stock, right? So we have created the one feature file and also we have written the scenario. So we have to implement the third step, right? So enter search keyword in YouTube. So we have to implement this particular step. So now I will go to the step definitions folder and I will create a class. I'll copy this one of the previous step definition class and I'll paste it. I will rename the class here with a, just I will add instead of, so here I'll add data tables, data table data driven testing step definition class. So that's it. I'll copy the class name as well. So that's it guys. So I will remove all the steps inside the class. Then I will provide the class name. So that's it, we are done. So again, I will go back to the feature file, data table, data driven testing dot feature file. I will simply right click on this feature file and I'll say define steps. So simply I'll click on this copy to clipboard and our step is ready. So we need to write the logic. I'll come to the data table data driven testing step definition class and I'll paste it here. So that's it, I will remove this line. Right, so you can add a number of test data. So you can add a number of test data like this. You can add, a, right now I have added two sets of test data and also you can add the n number of columns and n number of rows you can add it and that will be your assignment i will show you how to read the 
these particular sets of test data and how to perform the data driven testing using the data tables especially right so now i will go back to the again step definition class so here we will write the main logic which will read the this particular test data one by one and it will pass to this particular step right so first time it will opens the browser and it will enter the url that is youtube.com then it will search with the spec flow by tester stock first time then again second time it will search with the selenium by tester stock so without opening the browser so that means in this case basically we are saving the time we are not opening the browser and we are entering the url right so let us implement the logic we will read this particular sets of test data and we will pass it one by one i will go back to the step definition class now so here i am using the before we write anything in this particular step so let us define the one getter and setter class for reading this particular test data right so i will go back to the class again so here i am writing public class so here i'll say class in name as search key search key test data i'll say so that's it so here i am just specifying the key name so that means the whatever the header key what whatever the header data we have specified here so this i will pass it in the variable name right so that's it so if you are having a number of columns like this you can specify all those column names inside the this particular getter and setter class right so as of now i am having only one column so that's the reason i have written only one variable i have declared only one variable with a setter getter and setter so that's it so now what i will do let's implement the logic to read the test data here i'll use the reference variable of table right then i'll say create set so here you need to pass the class name so where you are actually creating the getters and setters so i'll copy this class name and i'll pass it here so that's it now you can import the this particular create set from the tech talk dot spec flow dot assist then i will assign back to the where so here i'll say search criteria so that's it so this particular variable contains the all the all the test data which is there in this particular feature file right we have the two sets of test data so i'll come back to the step definition file so i need to iterate through all the test data right so that this particular step will get executed based on number of sets of test data right so for that reason i will write the for each loop here so let me just write the for, for each loop here so simply i will copy this particular var variable and i'll say var i'll say keyword then i'll say in so this is a simple for each loop i'm writing here so this has a collection of data and i'm reading one by one by using the keyword right so for example so currently we are having the two sets of test data the count of this search criteria search criteria will be two two times this for each loop will be getting executed whatever the code we have written in the inside the for each loop right so now so we have opened the browser from the hooks then we are entering the url so here we have to identify the web element right after that you can enter these search keywords in the search text box right so let us quickly write the xpath to identify the search text box so i'll inspect the element
So here I'm using the name attribute by using the name attribute. Simply I will write down one xpath. So at the rate attribute name and equal to in the single quotation you can specify the value. So it is matching with the search text box, right? So that's it. Let's go to the step definition file. So here I'm using the driver object and I'm calling to the find element. So inside this I will say by dot xpath. So inside that I will pass the xpath and after that I will call to the method called clear. So if any value is there simply it will clears that particular text box right. By using the same xpath I will enter it. Enter the value now this time by using the send keys. So to access the test data, you need to use the keyword. Keyword dot, you can call to the variable. Whatever the variable you have specified here, so you can call to this particular variable so that it will return you the respective value. So right now, whenever the first time this scenario got executed, and whenever it comes to third step, right, it will pass this particular test data first time, and second time it will pass this second set of test data to the third step, right? Then after that, it will simply close the browser from the hooks, right? <clears throat> so that's it guys. So it is very simple. I have identified the element and I'm clearing it, the text box. And after that, we are entering the test data by using the keywords. So for the first time, it will return the first set of test data and second time whenever it is executing it will return the second set of test data so i will use this same xpath after entering some value in the text box search text box i am just using the send keys and i'm pressing the enter so here i'm using the keys dot enter Sorry. So after pressing the enter, I will wait for some time. So I will use the thread dot sleep. So inside this, I will specify 5000 milliseconds. That means it will be five seconds. So that's it, guys. So let me summarize once again from the scratch from the beginning. We have written the one future file, and uh, you can just create a future file and you can specify the steps. Where you wanted to run a specific step with the multiple sets of test data, you can create like this. You can add n number of columns and n number of rows with the test data. So that, that particular test step will run, scenario step will run with the multiple sets of test data. So after passing the multiple sets of test data to particular step, also you can implement the n number of steps. So that is up to you. So just I'm, um, showing you how to perform the data driven testing by using the data tables right so so this is a scenario what we have written and it will open the browser and it will enter the url and it will run this particular step two times first time it will pass this particular set of test data and second time it will pass the second set of test data then finally it will close the browser let's go to the data table step definition file so here what we have done is it is very simple. We have created a step by using the table reference variable. We have called to the create set. And by using the getters and setters, we are getting the, all the values from the future file and we are storing it in the search criteria variable. So once we have the set of data, then we are reading it one by one by using the for each loop. So whenever it runs the first time, it will get the first set of test data. Then it will execute the this particular step. And whenever it comes to the second time to this particular step, it will execute the, it will pass the second set of test data to this particular step and it will perform the rest of the actions. So that's it guys. So let me build this project now. So our build is successful. I will go to the test explorer now. So here we should be able to see the data table data table data driven testing right so if you look at this uh, our feature file we have represented this scenario name as 
data table data driven testing so i will execute this particular scenario now so it should launch the browser and it should enter the youtube.com then it has to search with the two keywords first time it should search with the spec flow by tester stock second time it should search with the selenium by tester stock So first time it is searching with the spec flow by tester stock. Then it is clearing it and it is searching with the selenium by tester stock. So if you look at the result also, and if I come to the step where it is, it is entering uh, multiple sets of test data, I mean where, where it is passing multiple sets of test data to the particular step, right? So here it is uh, showing also, right? So first time it is passing the spec flow by tester stock. Second time it is passing the selenium by tester stock. So like this, you can add n number of columns and also you can similar way you can add the n number of getters and setters. So based on the number of columns, you need to add the getters and setters. Then same thing, it, it, it will be repeated in the for each loop and it will be executed multiple times. So this is how we can use the data tables for performing the data driven testing in SpecFlow BDT automation framework. Uh, click on like if you like this video and also comment in the comment section if you are having any questions or queries or any issues. Uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial.